Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be putting a new bumper onto the Jeep. Well, new new to me bumper. But it's going to be a frame shop bumper. So that means that we're going to have to cut down the frame. Not using the OEM bracket that other bumpers would go on. Cut down the frame which allows the bumper to get closer into the body. Which gives us better approach angle when off-roading, wheeling, whatever you want to call it. So the bumper that I got is a VKS V2 Shorty with the winch bull bar um it also has a fog light hole so once we get it actually onto the jeep and mounted then i can go ahead get it sandblasted get it power coated make it look nice and pretty once for when it goes on and then we can install the winch and everything else but first thing is first we got to get this oem steel bumper off which don't get me wrong has been a great bumper i've always liked the look of it but want to change it up a little now so we're gonna go ahead get the skid plate off then get the bumper out make sure we unplug the lights and get it unbolted so we'll get right into it All right, so the front bumper is officially off. All the bolts on the underside were 15 millimeters and then the eight to get into these plates right here, they were 18 millimeter. So that's all it was, slides right on and off, super simple. But now we can go ahead onto the frame, take our measurements of where we need to cut exactly. We also are gonna have to relocate the vacuum pump up into the engine bay behind our PCM, but we'll cover that in a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead get the measurements, mark out the frame, and get the cutting. So it's a little bit harder to see because I only have black Sharpie, but you're gonna make a mark from the back side of this plate an inch and three quarters over. Now, if you have the 2.5 bumper, then you'd only do an inch, but because I have the two, then we have to go back an inch and three quarter because of the way it's designed. So. Gonna go ahead, mark it on that side, and then get the sawzall out and start cutting. Now that the frame is marked out, comes the fun slash slightly nerve-wracking part of actually cutting it up. So, I'm gonna go ahead, cut it apart. Well, for some reason my camera decided to stop recording after like 30 seconds of me starting to cut the frame, but other than that, the frame is cut, there's no going back now, so next step is to start test fitting, see if we need to trim anymore or if it's good to go, and if it's good to go then we'll start working on moving the vacuum pump and get everything else finished. Alright, so I got the bumper roughly put on real quick. And I don't know, but it looks pretty damn good. We're definitely gonna have to cut the cross member right there because that hanging just really don't look that pretty. So we'll get that marked out and trimmed. But as you can tell, the bumper's already sitting a lot closer and it still has to go back to these bolt holes on the frame. So it's got it going a little bit more, but the bumper itself is slightly pinched from the people I got it from and the way that they put it on so it's a little tight going on and off right now so I'm trying to get it opened up a little bit more so it slides on and off a little bit easier. Hopefully the gravel company is not too loud but the next thing I did after I got it slightly fitted on there is I went ahead and marked along the crash bar you can kind of see the line i went ahead and marked on both sides so i can go ahead 
and get that cut off because personally with the bumper on and the crash bar still there it just looks goofy so i'm gonna go ahead and get that cut off So after getting the crash bar cut off, I was able to slide the bumper into place, I had to take a flap disc and kind of smooth up a couple of areas. That way it slid on a little bit nicer, but I got to run home real quick, take care of a couple things. And that's where I'll finish up the installs, everything. But for the most part, the bumper is in place where it's going to go. I threw two bolts in here real quick, just that way. When I run down the road, it doesn't go anywhere. And once we're at home, we'll finish up uh, talking about how to relocate the vacuum pump for now i just got it screwed and taped in place that way it don't move at all but we're gonna run home and we'll finish up the project there all right so we're home now i got the bumper off got the hood open and i'm gonna start on moving the vacuum pump now first thing first is you're gonna disconnect your battery now normally if you do not have an s pod then your bracket will go under both these bolts 10 millimeter bolts undo them put it in place you'll just use the factory hardware off of the vacuum pump and bolts are right into place now metal cloak offers a bracket that works for the s-pod and the vacuum pump just similar to this bracket but it's more it has it's more filled in under here but because i'd rather save some money i'm going to go ahead and drill two holes in between this bar and this plate over here and go ahead and mount my vacuum pump to this bracket to save a little bit of money because metal cloaks bracket i believe is like 80 or 85 dollars so i'd rather save a little bit of money and make that work and if it doesn't work then i'll go ahead and order the bracket because i have an s-pod like i said if you don't have the s-pod then your bracket will go ahead and mount right under those two uh fender bolts so that's basically it and we're going to start getting everything right, taken apart so first thing first with the vacuum pump we're going to take a 10 millimeter socket and take out the factory hardware bolts and get it unmounted from the bracket that was mounted here on the frame rail next thing we're going to do is take off this little green retainer clip and once you get it kind of started from both sides and it'll pop off pretty easy doing it with one hand is a little bit more difficult so and once you get that off you can go ahead and remove the vacuum line from the actual vacuum pump itself you're gonna go ahead and remove this line off the vacuum pump and then you're gonna go ahead and undo the plug that is mounted to the bracket. Now, once you get the vacuum pump completely removed from down here, you're going to take out this 
the connector fitting that went from the vacuum pump to the actual hose here and disconnect that. You're gonna disconnect this line. Then you're gonna come up into the engine bay. Your vacuum line comes up here right in front of the washer fluid. Then it's gonna come back and it's gonna be connected into here with a little split way connector. You're gonna pull it out and make sure the split way connector comes out of here because the next thing is we're going to put this into there. And then once we're done with that, I'm gonna go ahead, mark holes on here to bolt this up to the bracket and start getting it mounted. One thing I also wanted to mention, because of the mounting points on the vacuum pump being lower than the top of it, I went ahead and got these two two inch spacers that will hold it down below the bracket so that way it's not hitting. And these cost me, I think, 75 cents each at my Ace hardware. So pick those up. I'm gonna go ahead, mark out the two holes on the bracket here and get those drilled out. So I went ahead, I got my two marks in place, one there, one right over here. And I'm gonna be using a 17 64th bit to drill out the holes. And then we'll go ahead and get that mounted up into place. All right, so I got the holes drilled and I got the vacuum pump mounted. Space has worked out perfect, gives it just a little bit of clearance. Now the only thing is, up here, because the bolts sit up, I'm gonna either have to get spacers or I will just set the actual S-Pod down onto this. But most likely I'll go to the store, get some spacers, and set it down on here properly with a couple longer screws because the little screws that hold it in place right now are not gonna be long enough. So I'm gonna go ahead, get the vacuum pump hooked up, to the line in place and then we're gonna go ahead and take this connector down here that it plugs into normally, cut that. We're gonna splice these wires, run new wires up to the vacuum pump and get it plugged right, in. So the next step is going to be to cut this connector off. Make sure you cut it back a decent little ways that we have room to splice your wires together. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your roll of wire, splice to this harness run it up to where it will reach the vacuum pump in the engine bay, and then take the other end, splice it to the connector, and then connect it to the vacuum pump. Now that we got those connected there, end up here and plugged in, I'm gonna go ahead, take some electrical tape, cover up the connectors, and then start drilling out the holes for the bumper in the frame. Right, so wires are taped, they're fed through, and everything is all connected how it should be. Now, as you could kind of see, me trying to save money was not my best bet. But I tried. I knew that I would need spacers so that I could mount this all the way securely because the bolts stuck up. But the one thing I did not consider is how the S-Pod actually latches into this bracket to seal it up all the way. So this side being pushed up, it won't close all the way. This side, perfectly fine. So I'm just gonna have to bite the bullet, go ahead, get the metal cloak bracket, which isn't a big deal. I tried saving a couple bucks. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. So it is what it is. But now the final step of the process, get the bumper mounted up onto the frame, mark out the holes, get those drilled so we can finish up and have the bumper fully mounted. The holes have been marked. So we're gonna go ahead, drill them out get this thing mounted. So the bumper is officially on, all bolted down, and I gotta tie up the fog light wire right there, but the amount of clearance slash angle approach you now have with this bumper is absolutely crazy and it just looks good now to determine if i'm gonna powder coat it black or paint match it or we'll figure that out later but got the nice brand new grade 8 hardware holding the thing on it's not going anywhere got the winch gonna wait to put that on until we get it powder coated or painted or whatever so that is basically gonna be it Thank you guys for watching it took me forever mainly because i kept doing other stuff but it's on there 
and it looks good and I'm happy. So see y'all next time.